Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about uh, different culture media that we use in microbiology. And um, sometimes um, understanding what those media are, are um, is, can be confusing. Um, there's different definitions and different components that come into the, the fabrication and the ingredients of these, these different medium or media in plural. And um, understanding what's in certain types of media versus others will help you make very good choices uh, in order to be able to identify and isolate your bacteria. So uh, let me start by saying that there are some types of media that are uh, very, very simple. And um, there's this one type of medium that's called minimal, minimal medium. And um, sometimes we will see like MMA, for example, or there's also another name called uh, the Davis uh, recipe. They're diff just different types of, of, uh, of medium, and they contain different things. But before we get into this, I think if the, one of the first thing that we need to understand is that what do bacteria need? What do they need to grow and to, uh, to develop and colonize uh, uh, an environment? And um, the, there are few things that they absolutely need. Um, we can give them lots of things. Uh, bacteria will use all sorts of uh, substrate. That's what we call like their food. They will use all sorts of substrate, but um, there are a few things that they absolutely need in order to be able to survive and proliferate. So one of those things are uh, the, f the first one I would say that the first one that's quite important is a carbon source. Uh, you know, when we're thinking about cells, when we're thinking, thinking about different types of cells, bacteria included, um, all the structures of the molecules, like so everything from the membrane, from the cell wall, from the proteins, the DNA, RNA, and all of that, they all contain carbon. And carbon needs to be, it cannot be fabricated. It's an atom that's important and needs to be incorporated. And that comes from the substrate. Another type of, uh, me, uh, of element or ingredient that's very important is a source for nitrogen. And um, nitrogen is very important because nitrogen is uh, part of, uh, of uh, proteins. Uh, amino acids always contain nitrogen. Um, the bases in DNA and RNA contains, contain nitrogen. So that's another part that's very, very important. Another very important ingredient is, um, is a source of, of energy. And um, the concept of what is a source of energy is sometimes confusing for people, like what kind of energy are we talking about? Well, it depends on the type of microorganism. Some microorganisms can use light as energy uh, because they can conduct photosynthesis. But most of the microorganisms do not use light um, so they need to find another source of energy and for most bacteria, I wouldn't say that for all of them, for most bacteria, especially um, or mostly the bacteria that are uh, on in, in our body uh, and actually can, um, you know, you, you can develop uh, disease from, are a type of mi microorganisms that will use the carbon source as a source of, of, of energy as well. Um, so that's, that's just to keep, keep that in mind. I won't get into all the nomenclature of how, which type of, of, um, of uh, bacteria we find, photoautotrophs or, you know, or heteroorganotrophs and, and all of these things. I don't want to get into this. Um, if you're interested, maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll create a video about this. But I just want to, to include what's important for bacteria to grow and, and all those three uh, elements are very important. And, also another one that should not be neglected is um, often we'll have some kind of uh, you know, minerals that are important. Uh, trace, we also say there are trace elements, uh, minerals, and there's also vi uh, all sorts of vitamins that can be used. So when we're thinking about a medium, minimal media, we're talking about a uh, medium that will allow bacteria to proliferate but it's only to a minimum level. It's to a level that um, you know would would help them to, to proliferate, but they won't be able to grow and grow and grow very long with this unless we give them the medium over and over again. But um, so it's not a very rich medium, and that brings me to the other uh, definition. So if we have minimal media, we also have something called a rich medium, and a rich medium uh, contains. Uh, 
all of the above here, so we have carbon, nitrogen sources, uh, and all of that. But um, a rich medium contains um, other types of elements. And some of those elements uh, have to be, um, you know, defined in a certain way. And uh, they, they, they're usually um, uh, allow for the growth of multiple types of bacteria. So when you think of main mill media, you could grow, for example, one bacteria that's called E. coli. We could grow it in a certain type of media. And then another type of bacteria will grow in slightly different types of type of medium. Well, the rich media, rich medium, allows for the growth of multiple types of microorganisms and it, it allows um, proliferation of all sorts of, of uh, species of microorganisms, while the minimum media is not so much like that. Now, that brings me to another, another part of what medium are, and there's two different types of medium that you'll find. One is uh, something called a defined, defined medium, or chemically defined, chemically chemically defined medium. And um, chemically defined medium is when you have uh, a recipe that you follow. So um, you would have, for example, um, magnesium sulfate. Well, you have magnesium sulfate at, you know, 0.5 gram per liter. And then you have uh, another, like, sodium chloride, so sodium chloride at a certain amount per liter. It's very precisely measured. And then you can recreate this over and over and over again in your lab. And it won't change. Like, if you do this today and you do this in 10 years from now, and you will always have the same kind of result if you're, you know, careful when you prepare your, your medium. Um, you always have the same kind of quality associated with it, okay? Um, so you would have, like, this recipe, you look at it and you replicate that. There's another type of medium that is called complex medium. And that one is, that, that um, medium it's kind of connected to the rich medium I was telling you about earlier. And um, here's, here's the difference between complex and chemically defined medium. The difference is this. Um, when you want to create a complex medium, you still follow a recipe and you add a few elements and there are a few like uh, sodium chloride, maybe magnesium sulfate and all of that. But the difference here is that some of the ingredients are kind of like we're not exactly sure um, of the different quantities in it. So I'm going to give you an example here. Um, sometimes as a source of nitrogen, we will add uh, peptides or uh, pro animal proteins. So, uh, and those proteins usually to make, to make these proteins more uh, easier to, to use by bacteria, we will digest and pre-digest them in a lab with the different types of enzymes, proteases they're called. And in that case, we would have like uh, different types of, of, of uh, enzymes that would, you know, can be used, the proteases. And I'm going to use like, for example, uh, trypsin is, uh, is one of those molecules, right? And um, these digestion of different types of, of proteins with these enzymes um, have different names and they can be called tryptones peptones and all that, right? So tryptone, tryptone, and say peptone. And what's in tryptone and peptone? Well, we know that it comes from proteins that have been digested by certain enzymes, but we don't know what peptides exactly are present in any tryptone or peptone. So somebody would give you a recipe and say, you know, you need to add five grams per liter. I'm just saying a number like that, right? Um, so five grams per liter of tryptone, and um, okay, yeah, you can buy tryptone and then you use it, but you don't know exactly what are the components of that tryptone. You just know it's protein that has, has been, have been digested by, by some kind of enzyme. So if you wanted to replicate this year after year after year, you can do that. The difference, though, is that depending on the company you buy the tryptone from and depending on the batches, the quality might vary. I'm not saying they're not good quality year after year. There's quality controls that go within those companies, and that's fine. But if you were very, very picky and wanted to know exactly what's in it, you couldn't, right? So that's, that's, that's important to know. Here, when we're talking about microbiology, this is no analytical chemistry. 
right? So we don't, we're not really concerned about, you know, so many grams of this, so many grams of that. What we're concerned about is to give our bacteria what they need to grow and to proliferate. And that's it, right? So the difference between the chemically defined and complex medium, I just explained that to you. But what we want to do is, in this case here, the chemically defined, we know exactly what's in it and the complex. And now let me connect this to two things. This one to the minimal, minimal medium and the complex to uh, the rich medium. Okay? So when you have a minimal medium, you know exactly what your bacteria should, should need um, because it's published somewhere, because you studied it in some way. And then complex is rich, you want to give any, everything that your bacteria need to be able to proliferate. Okay, so that's, that's basically uh, it for those two types of medium. Now I want to complicate things a little bit because medium are good for bacterial growth, but in the lab they also help us, help us uh, understand what's growing. And uh, we'll see that there's two types of medium that are very, very useful uh, to understand and identify uh, bacteria. Okay, so, and I'll show you some, uh, I'll show you some slides after that so you can actually see um, and, and, you know, I have actual pictures and that I can show you after that. So, let's look at the first type of medium and um, the first one um, would be, say, um, uh, the selective medium. So, here's what a selective medium is. Sometimes you want to grow bacteria, so you have a mix of bacteria. And because you want to identify them, and because you want to select them to see, well, do I have this type of bacteria or do I have this type of bacteria? Sometimes it's very useful to have in your medium some kind of molecule that will decide or will let certain types of bacteria grow and not other ones. Okay. So I have two types of medium for this that I want to give you as an example, right? There's more than that, but that's, you know, that's the two very widespread types of medium that are found, right? The first one is something called uh, McConkie. McConkie. So the McConkie medium, also known as Mac has uh, different components in it. I won't go to the whole list. I don't know it by heart, so I would need to read it from a list, and I'm not interested in doing that. It's not, it's irrelevant anyway. But the McConkie has several key molecules in it that will select for certain types of microorganisms. So, the first thing that it has is this. Crystal violet. Crystal violet. And Crystal violet will allow the growth of, actually will not allow the growth of gram positive cells. Okay? So the gram positive cells will not grow when there's crystal violet. But basically what it does is that it allows the growth of gram negative cells. Right? Easy, right? Well let's complicate things a little bit more even. So that's the first ingredient, crystal violet. The second ingredient in a McConkie plate is something called bile salts. What are bile, bile salts? Well, bile, salt, bile salts are molecules that are, originate from um, the metabolism of uh, cholesterol, among other things. And they eventually are found in your intestine and they help uh, for the digestions of, uh, of fats, actually. So, um, you know, you can tell here by just me describing what bile salts are. Bile salts, salts are. Um, this is a complex medium, right? We don't know exactly what's in the composition of these bile salts. We could not analyze them, and I'm sure the, the you know, when you buy it from a, a company, they'll tell you, well, I have this and this and this in them, but you can tell here that it's a complex medium. You, you don't always know exactly what the components are. And that, that's fine with us. What we want with the bile salts is that while the gram negative have, have been eliminated by crystal violet, the bile salts will allow the growth of only the bacteria that are found in your gut, so enterobacteria, right? All the other ones, even if they're gram negative, 
if they're not enterobacterial, if they cannot tolerate bowel cells, they'll be eliminated and they won't grow. All right? So that here in itself is the selective aspect of uh, this type of medium. Now, the interesting thing here is that McConkie plate is a selective and also, and we'll explain that, differential. Differential type of media. Okay? So what does that mean? What it means is this. We selected, we killed some bacteria that didn't grow on our, on our uh, plate, and we selected against those that can grow, and those that can, gram positive cannot, but even if they're gram, some of them might be gram negative, if they're not enterobacteria that can, and if they cannot tolerate the presence of bile salts, they won't grow. It's selected, right? But there's many types of bacteria that I can, actually can grow on a MAC plate in the presence of crystal violet and in the presence of bile salts. Enterobacteria, there's many different types of enterobacteria. So, what do we do when we have several kinds of bacteria grow on, in, on a plate and we want to identify them, right? So what do we do with that? Well, we add something else. And that something else is um, lactose. Why lactose? Well, because enterobacteria, some of them, E. coli being one of them, can ferment lactose. And when there's fermentation of lactose, there's a creation of an acidic, an acidic product. And that, that acidic product makes the pH you know, go down, plummet. So it'll become way more acidic. So if you, know, um, you have a pH of 6 or 7, well, with acid, and after fermentation of lactose, the pH will go down much lower than 6 or 7, right? So what happens to this medium is this. The bile salts, when the pH goes down, the bile salts will precipitate. So around your bacteria, and you might not know what I'm talking about, I'll show you a few slides in a minute, and you'll see exactly what I mean, right? But the bile salts will precipitate around the bacteria that have grown, and you can actually see that. And the other thing that we will add in order to uh, make a difference, to differentiate, so the differential, the differential part of that, of that media, medium is uh, neutral red. Oh, what is neutral red, right? Neutral red. So neutral red is a pH indicator, and uh, it changes color depending on the pH. So neutral red will go from kind of reddish to purple, pink-ish. So when bacteria... Um, uh, ferment lactose, not only are, is there um, precipitation of bile salt, but also there's a change, a very uh, obvious change of color, and y you, will, you will see this very, uh, very soon. Okay, so keep that in mind. So that's it for the McConkie plate. So now the other uh, type of medium that I wanted to tell you, it's also selective and differential. So I'll keep the selective differential wording there, and I will introduce the other medium, which is called mannitol, mannitol salt agar. Agar. And um, so also known as MSA. Okay, so MSA. Um, this, uh, this medium contains a few things uh, amongst the what is selective in this mantle salt agar is that these, uh, this type of medium contains 7.5% of uh, sodium chloride. And um, not all bacteria can resist that. So salt is a preservative and salt will kill, um, you know, prevent the growth and kill many types of bacteria. So you need to have a bacteria that's pretty resistant here. And we say that bacteria that grow on a such a medium, they can tolerate salt at, at this concentration, uh, are called halophiles. Halophiles. Halophiles, right? So these halophiles can tolerate 7.5% sodium chloride. Halophiles. So that's selective. 
So bacteria that cannot tolerate it won't grow. Now, what if we have two types or three types of bacteria that can grow because it, they're allophiles, and now how can we make a difference between these types of bacteria? The answer, of course, is yes to that. Because we add something else to um, that, um, that plate, and that's the differential part of it. So what, what, makes, uh, what makes it being differential is that, as the name implies, we add to this, um, this sugar that's called mannitol. And mannitol will ferment. Same idea as in a conky plate. Bacteria that ferment mannitol will make the pH go down. And then guess what? There's something else in the medium. It's called uh, phenol red. And phenol red is uh, another type of pH indicator. And when the pH changes, so when the pH goes from um, you know, neutral to acidic, uh, so below 7, um, the color will shift to yellow. So it's red, phenol red, so red, and then it will shift to yellow. So all bacteria that grow are halophilic, but those that have a halo or change the color of the medium to, to, uh, to yellow, in this case, they, they, they can ferment mannitol. And the, the type of bacteria that can do that are, is S. aureus. Now, just a little word of, on, on halophiles and why, why um, do we want to select for halophiles, right? Are we studying bacteria in the environment and everything? Well, just so you know that um, halophiles, bacteria, halophilic bacteria are bacteria can grow on your skin and on you. Um, and we all sweat at some point. And uh, so when you think, for example, of the armpits or the groin area, um, there is sweat there and there's a lot of, of warmth, of course. And uh, since there's sweat, bacteria need to be, uh, and you know there's salt in your sweat, uh, bacteria need to be able to cope with that. And halophilic bacteria are very good at that. So Staphylococcus aureus, being one of the bacteria that live on many of you and, and me, um, are halophilic. And bacteria, these types of bacteria can cause uh, different types of diseases. Most of the time they don't, but sometimes they can. And, um, and they, you know, so it might be important sometimes to be able to identify them in maybe a medical type of context or understand them, to study them, okay? So what I want to do right now, I'm just going to shift the, the camera and adjust it a little bit, so it'll be annoying for about 2.2 seconds. I'm going to shift it to my, my PowerPoint presentation. I'm actually going to show you what, uh, what these types of medium look like when we look at plates that grow. So you'll see it's pretty, pretty nice little picture there. So I'm just going to focus a little bit more on my presentation here, and then I'm going to go right there. So here I have um, my, uh, my um, we're talking about selective media, and I'll go back to the, uh, to the differential aspect after that. And what we have here is a mannitol salt agar, so MSA. And so this is our plate right here, and we plated three types of bacteria on that. So you might see growth, you might not see growth on this one. I have another slide that focuses more on it, so you'll see, hopefully you'll see growth there. But what we have here, here is S. aureus, we have S. epidermidis right here, and we have E. coli right there, okay? So S. epidermidis and S. aureus live on your skin, so they're halophiles. E. coli live in your intestine, it's not halophile. It, it cannot tolerate 7.5% salt. It tolerates something else, but it doesn't tolerate 7.5% salt. So what we have here is two types of bacteria that grow there. If we didn't add phenol red, and mannitol to this plate, we would not be able to differentiate between the S. aureus here in yellow and the S. epidermidis there that did not change the pH, as you can tell, right? So because of this, we selected against a type of bacteria, but we can identify them as well, as you will see in the other slide. Now, what I have here on this one here is a McConkie agar, MAC, right? So what we have here is a plate and I have three types of bacteria. Remember that um, it contains, McConkie agar contains um, different types of molecules, one of them being crystal violet. And crystal violet selects against gram positive. So gram positive should not be found on this uh, type of plate. And we see here that we plated S. epidermidis, we plated, plated E. coli and uh, hafnia alvei right here. 
and you can see that S. epidermidis is not growing. Okay, there's nothing here. You might not see it, but believe me, there's nothing there. Because crystal violet selected against a gram positive. These two ones are gram negative, they grew. And on top of that, they're enterobacteria. So even if they were gram negative but not enterobacteria, basically not being able to tolerate bile salts, we wouldn't have any growth here, right? So we have growth in this one and this one as well. But now how do we make a difference between the two? Well, we know that E. coli is able to, to ferment lactose. It can do that. After all, they can't. And what happens here is that there's a pH change in this case here, E. coli fermenting lactose creates a, an acidic uh, molecule. This molecule affects phenol red. So we can see the color here. But also you see there's this type of fuzzy uh, color in, in, uh, in the background. And that's uh, actually bile salts that have been precipitated. Now if we look at the other slide here, it shows you something uh, you know, more up close what the, the plate is, right? So let's go back to this MSA plate. We see S. aureus here, we see the growth here, so we plated this bacteria on the slide right here. And you see this, uh, this yellow uh, background right there caused by a change in pH and uh, the, the phenol red that's there. But also in this one here, we see S. epidermidis, and hopefully you can see that. You can see the, the growth of this bacteria, right? Um, halophile as well, but not able to ferment mannitol. And if you give me an unknown between those two, you say, please identify a sepidermidis from S. aureus, I would plate it on this, and I would be for sure, uh, I would know that the one that's yellow is, is S. aureus, okay, because it's the, the one that ferments, uh, ferments uh, mannitol. So now if we go back to this one here, we're looking at the differential aspect of MSA, uh, not MSA, but Mac McConkie plate right here. So you can tell here um, that S. epidermis, there's no growth at all. There's nothing. It's gram positive. It didn't grow because of crystal violet. But then we have bile salts, those two tolerate bile, bile salts, enterobacteria. But what you can see here again is, uh, and hopefully you can see it better on this slide than the previous one, you can see that there is precipitation of bile salts and a change of color. So uh, hopefully um, this was useful to you. Hopefully uh, you can uh, have, you have a better idea of the type of medium that are out there. There's many other ones. Um, other ones that are very important, they identify the types of metabolism. But these ones are the, the starting point of doing some microbiology in the lab and actually being able to understand what bacteria need. So don't forget that um, there's different types of media and you need to know what you need to grow, uh, what the ingredients are in order to be able to grow a type of bacteria or another. There's different needs out there, right? Some bacteria need substance A and the other ones uh, substance A would might be toxic for them so they need something else. So that's very important to know and then when, uh, once you know this you're in a better way to have a better microbiology lab. Thank you.